Okay, I got a lot of things that I figure I, I need to do here tonight before I introduce our speaker. And that it would be to introduce his household group, their small group. And I just, uh, right here in this, so if you guys all would stand up, if you don't mind. <laughs> Ken, come on Elaine, stand up, we're introducing your household. Ken and Christine, was a, a, a part of uh, Couples of Christ way back when. Now they are now families in Christ Jesus. Ken and Christine were part of our unit, which now that has to be 20 years ago, this call group has been meeting. Over 20 years. And so I just want to honor them in this, you know, that they have come together and shared their lives together, and this is something that we're being called. So that leads me on to the next thing. Told you, M microphone. We're doing small groups this Lent, <laughs> and we need people to sign up for small groups. Now, KJ and I are gonna lead a small group. I know, you know, nobody wants to be with me, but KJ will be there. And the wheelers, need to come. Wednesday night at 6.30 is ours. So I'm recruiting, and that will give us, we, you know, like, do, how many more people do we need then in our small group? Okay, but it, anyway, please pray about doing this for Lent, entering into small groups, to really share with one another, you know, as part of what yeah, we're doing. These will be in our homes, a little different than our Alpha, which we're running in the church and in our halls and things like that, but a much more intimate, you know, gathering of people. So do I got the Wheelers? Mama, Wheeler is coming. <laughs> so, okay. Now this leads me to the next part. And this is kind of goes along with a little bit of the introduction to Nick. I met Nick 15 years ago, nine months, six days. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? No, I did. <laughs> Why do we know that? Because Men of Praise, which you know, Nick is part of, Ken here is part of, Ken Paswa is part of, they're going to be doing their 40 what? Probably 40th Men of Praise retreat. 42 years, and that is always on the last, um, uh, on April, the last weekend. So that's the reason I could figure out when I met Nick. And he gave that uh, teaching that, that night. Not that night, that's, so it's been 15 years, nine months, seven days since I heard him speak for the first time. And I remember what that talk was. That means he's a pretty good teacher, if you can remember that much, that far back. I just know that, you know, like, the Lord is so good to us to allow him to come here and to be part of what we're doing and to bring the message of Jesus Christ and how much Jesus wants to speak to us, speak to our hearts, come that he wants us to be known by him and, and just he will come and be with us and sit with us. So I want to introduce my friend, my brother in Christ, Nick Alcander. Now, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, you can pray too. I got to turn something off here. You'll take it.
good? Good here? Awesome. Thank you for that, John. Um, yeah, I wouldn't know how to do this without getting prayed over ahead of time. So. Good evening. How are we all? We good? So it is an honor to be here with you guys. And um, that was a great song to start. So I'm pretty blessed in as... We heard Tom mention at the beginning, yeah, when you're little, you learn how to pray the Our Father, you, you learn how to go to Mass and say the prayers at Mass and do everything. But for me, I can actually pinpoint when the start of my own personal walk of having a daily prayer time started. And for me, it started my sophomore year of high school of October 1993. And ever since that time I've had a daily prayer time and it has done nothing but grown ever since when I went away to college my freshman year of college I went down to Ashland University and that was the very first time that I was I was introduced to the scripture that that Tom mentioned earlier that I want to share with you um, it comes from first Thessalonians and this is where St. Paul is talking to us and it was actually, I wrestled in college. It was my assistant wrestling coach who I had a great relationship with. And he was who challenged me with this scripture. And it was the first time that I had really come across it and been opened up to it. And it, the whole thing goes, it starts in verse 16 in chapter 5. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all circumstances, give thanks for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. And as my buddy Nate, the assistant coach, pointed that out to me and we started talking about it, a lot of it made sense to me. I, I could get behind everything that that scripture was saying except that pray without ceasing. It wasn't that I couldn't get behind it. I couldn't grasp how is that possible, right? That the Lord of the universe, creator of everything that has all these things going on, would want to be in conversation with me 24-7. And I was away at college, right? And at college, you go there to get your education, to get a degree, and get ready to go out into the workforce. So if I'm here getting a degree to go into the workforce, how was I going to have time to be on my knees 24-7 praying? Because truthfully, up to that point, my method of prayer that I knew about was going to Mass in my bedtime prayers that I had in reading Scripture. And I knew that I wasn't going to college to get a job that was going to allow that in my classroom, because I'm a school teacher, to make it possible. So I would keep coming back to this, pray without ceasing. It's in scripture, so it must be supposed to happen, right? But I, I wasn't fully getting there. So I graduate college, and in 2001, Sharon and I get married. And we were truly blessed that within our first year of marriage, by the end of our first year of marriage, we met the Skiltons. And we join, at that time, Couples for Christ, but we've gone through what was called a Life in the Spirit seminar. And if I could ever recommend anything to you, if you are looking to really grow in your faith, to seek out anything that's referred to and brings along the line of a Life in the Spirit seminar. Around here, you might hear of a new way of living, but tapping into the Holy Spirit and everything that the Holy Spirit has to offer is what rocked my world when it came to my prayer time. And it changed everything. And then on top of that, in getting in tune with the Holy Spirit, I got my small group community. If I were David going into battle against Goliath, 
these would be my stones that I would select every single time. And in the 20 years that we've been a part of this group, I've had to use them. When you heard John talk about small group, you want to grow in your prayer time. Small group helps. I'm sure you've heard about having an accountability partner and having someone that's going to come up and just say, hey, how's your prayer time? How's that prayer time going? Is it growing? Are you going deeper? What are you hearing in your prayer time? Right? And you get at some point early on where you're on fire. I, th I think when we all first have that personal experience with Jesus, that first time you're on fire and you're telling everybody and everything's going good. But then over time, things start to sizzle out as you really get into the grind of life again and you come off of your mountaintop experience. And you know you're supposed to have this prayer time and you're trying to have this prayer time. And it gets to a point in a small group community when you get around great holy people, they don't even have to ask. Because you know they have a rock solid prayer time. And you just get around them and you go, oh man, I want to tap into what they have. And it's that prayer time and it's everything that you share in small group communities and everything that the Holy Spirit continues to point out to you in those communities, in each other, that just draws you into a, an, a deeper personal relationship with Jesus yourself. One of the things early on that I got, because we would get a lot of teachings in FCJC and in Men of Praise, is I heard several times in teachings where someone would challenge me with this saying of, are you getting your prayer time in? Or are you getting into your prayer time? And it's that saying that if you really sit back and think, there were a lot of times up to that point that, like I shared, I started a daily prayer time as a sophomore in high school. But to be honest, I didn't truly understand what I was doing in that daily prayer time until 10 plus years after it of growing in my faith with the Holy Spirit and understand what it meant to not just check off any boxes that I said my prayers, that I read my scripture, that I made it through this book several times, but the idea of, did I get into it enough where I let it change my heart? Did my prayer time today affect the rest of my day? And as I go through these things with our group with the men of praise. It's just one of those things that just continue to keep to grow and grow and grow. And when you have these things, I gotta imagine that you've, you've had mornings that you didn't feel like praying, or you've had evenings that the day just didn't go too well. And maybe you had that evening where you, the life just stunk that day. You got some news that you did not want to get. And we go through those trials of life where you're just like, I don't have it today, Lord. And when I used to try to go to my prayer time on my own and I didn't have it, nothing got accomplished. But when I had the Holy Spirit by my side, encourage me to, you know, you don't have nothing, come to your prayer time and watch what God can do. I would show up to my prayer time with nothing and God would turn it into something. I would be obedient because the Holy Spirit would prompt me to still pick up scripture and I'd be amazed at what he would point out to me. It was almost 14, 15 years ago that Sharon was diagnosed with cancer and you want to talk about a time in your life where it can get hard to pray. But you want to talk about a time in your life where you depend on your stones in your community. Because there was days I didn't need to pray. They lifted us up. That's what community does. That's what, when you know you have other people around you that have that prayer time and have that personal relationship with Jesus, it gives you that confidence where you can be having that bad day 
and I can get to that prayer time and not feel it, and all of a sudden, something changed. Something changed in my heart. And I can chat with my brother Ken later, and I'll be like, what were you doing last night? He's like, I don't know. Holy Spirit brought you to my mind. So I just started praying. And I felt it. And as a group, we've been able to be there for each other in those situations. And when you hear it, and he didn't know at the time that I was in the position that I needed, but that was why the Lord put me on his heart to pray for me. But when you hear that, and you hear that the Holy Spirit and the Lord uses you that way, what an awesome feeling that is. We are blessed, brothers and sisters, with intercessory prayer time to lift other people up. Out of where I'm at now with, I have different things that I pray throughout the day and I do different things all throughout the day for prayer. But my intercessory prayer list, when I get to pray for all those people that the Lord brought into my life and have asked for prayer, and I get to take the focus off of myself, and I, I deal with a, quite a bit of anxiety and worry at work and all kinds of stuff in life, but it, it goes away during my intercessor prayer time. Knowing that the Lord has blessed me with an opportunity to be part of somebody else's witness and somebody else's story, to lift them up at that moment, and then to check in with them later and see how things are going for whatever we're praying for. And my list has gotten so long now that I have to actually break it up into four different points throughout the day. And it's awesome. It's exciting. Years ago, the church had a year of hope. And this past year, we just had the year of St. Joseph. And ever since it got real big, I want to say it was like five or six years ago. I've been really going to the Holy Spirit on going and praying to the Holy Spirit and asking, what's my year supposed to be like this upcoming year? What are you leading me to? What does the Lord need out of Nick in 2022 or 2023 and as we go? Right now, obviously, I take it to the Holy Spirit for what should this upcoming Lent look like? Right? And I, I hope that you take John seriously in thinking about those small group communities because that sounds phenomenal. But before we get to Lent, we should be taking some prayer time on already making sure that we're in line with the Lord. One of the things that Sharon loves about Father Donnelly where we're at out in Madison is Father Donnelly, when we get to Ash Wednesday, is always going to say, eat your chocolate. Eat your chocolate. Add some extra prayers to your prayer time. Say a daily rosary. Bring something new into your prayer life. And the Holy Spirit has been pointing these things out. And so, and I would keep coming back to that. Is this what pray without ceasing is supposed to be like? Is this pray without ceasing, letting the Holy Spirit continue to point things out to you throughout the course of the day that draws your mind back to Christ? and draws your mind back to God and wants to share and love other people even better than I could do it myself. Have you had those Holy Spirit moments in the day? Have you had those goosebump moments where you're just like almost out of body of experience because you just know that the Holy Spirit has taken that moment over? And it's awesome to watch. It's a blessing. So one of the things years ago that the Holy Spirit really brought me to is the saints. If I can encourage you to, to tap into anything of our beautiful Catholic church, one of the things, there's going to be several, but one of them is the saints. Start reading about the saints. Check into the saints. So one of the saints I want to talk about is St. Catherine of Siena. St. Catherine of Siena was known to be a mystic, right? And her spiritual director would tell stories later about her that when she would pray the divine office and she would walk the hallways praying the divine office, she had such a close relationship with Jesus 
that it was as if she would say it was this, Jesus was walking with her praying in the office. And as they would go through the Psalms, her and Jesus would go back and forth saying each stanza of the Psalms as they would pray the liturgy of the hours. And when she would get to the glory be, this is how she would pray the glory be. Glory be to the Father, glory be to thee, and glory be to the Holy Spirit. What a prayer time is that? Where you know that you know that you know Jesus is right there with you. And isn't that the relationship we all want? Amen? Another thing that years ago the Holy Spirit brought me to, of course, was adoration. And adoration is just a great time for prayer. It's always the go-to if someone talks about how their mind is all over the place and they struggle with quieting things down to go deep into prayer. Adoration is the number one. Or if someone's saying, really, you can hear God talk back to you. You know his voice. And it's taken years because I've felt like I've heard a lot of voices in my head <laughs> over the years, right? But over time, you get to pick out that holy, you get used to the same one and you know what's putting the right things on your heart and drawing you to the, the right things and drawing you closer to God. And you, you get to re realize his voice. But for me, a lot of that happens in adoration, right? But one of the things, and I teach PSR, and I have my middle school students that I teach PSR to, and, and I try to point this out with them because we will always bring our PSR students to adoration at least once or twice a year throughout class. And one of the most recent ones that I wanted to get the point across, because the Holy Spirit had pointed this out to me long ago, and I think a lot of us miss it sometimes. Adoration goes both ways. When we're in the adoration chapel, I'd like you and I would encourage you to take five to 10 minutes where you just let God, Jesus, adore you. And I had someone point this out to me a long, long time ago, early on in my time of going to adoration. And it's at five, 10 minutes of me hearing Jesus go, Nick, you're awesome. Nick, I am so in love with you. Nick, I am so glad you gave that lesson that you gave to your students. And so when I talked to my PSR students and we would do that, I wanted them to start hearing Jesus' voice, right? That for a young person to try to draw closer to the Lord in adoration, for them to hear, you're good enough. You're exactly who I made you to be. You are the apple of my eye. And for five to ten minutes in adoration, where you put the books aside, you might have all your regular prayers that you like to do when you're in adoration. But to put it all down, and just to go back to that time when you were a little kid, and you put your head on the pew or wherever, and you just gaze at the Blessed Sacrament. And you imagine him gazing back at you adoring you for spending time with him. There's nothing like it. As I would go along with this, the desires would continue to increase. As the Holy Spirit brought these other things into my prayer time, and other people go, well, how could you do all these things? And the Holy Spirit, God gives me the time. It just makes it happen. I'm in the middle of teaching a lesson and I'm supposed to be teaching math and the Holy Spirit will draw my attention to a student that needs a one-on-one. -on -one. And then I get those goosebumps and I'm just open. And the Holy Spirit just takes that moment over. And all I do as the conversation's going on, I'm just praying. And it's, go Holy Spirit, go. And it's awesome. I get to the point now, I just had a week ago today, 
um, parent-teacher conferences. I teach at a public school. A majority of my notes that come out of parent-teacher conferences is just a list of things that I have parents that ask me to pray for things in their family. It's pretty awesome, right? I mean, think about that. So whatever we hear about our public schools, we need to not get discouraged. We need to pray for our Christians that are in those public schools to rise up. And I realized that as many times as, trust me, I wanted to run out of that public school long ago. The Lord had me there for a reason. And what a blessed reason it is. I've had more parents open up to me and share about things with me just because they know I pray. And they know I'm going to bring it back up in the next time that we meet or make a phone call. And they trust me that we'll get to the math. The math will happen. The state's going to test us regardless. So the pray without ceasing would keep coming up. And the desire for it would happen more and more. And the Holy Spirit would point these things out that, look, look what we're doing, look what we're doing. So it gets to the point where before I go to a meeting... I don't even open up that door to the meeting before it's, Lord, I hope you're in there already. <laughs> Take this meeting over. And through all of our teachings that we get, we started getting teachings on guardians, guardian angels. Ha! Huh. I can pray to guardian angel and go, hey, guardian angel, can you go talk to his guardian angel before we go talk? <laughs> can you set something up for us? And those things get blessed over and over again. My morning prayer before I leave for work is pretty simple to now. Of, I just pray for divine appointments. And I pray that I don't miss them. Lord, set up my schedule for me today. Holy Spirit, give me the goosebumps so I don't miss them. And then remind me that time and time again, you have not let me down as long as I get out of your way. One of the, the times at Men of Praise Retreat, and I don't know if uh, John was at that one, um, I was blessed years ago to be brought to this book. It's called Trust Will Surrender to Divine Providence. And um, given teachings on this one, and actually we're, we're doing it again. So John mentioned our Men of Praise retreat. We do have another one coming up here in April. Um, and Trust Will Surrender to Divine Providence is one of those things that actually I, I had read when Sherm was going through cancer. And it was early on. And when you have an awesome prayer time and you're starting to really grow into it, things like cancer can come up. And the Lord puts on your heart in that prayer time as you grow that we weren't completely just made for this world, right? We got eternity waiting for us. There's something way better than this going on that's just waiting. Our eternal home in heaven. And one of the things that this book brought me to was as Sharon was going through cancer, and it's hard for a lot of people to get to it and to fully grasp, but when I had to pray, I had to realize Sharon was in a win-win situation. When you have faith and you have a prayer time, cancer can never win. Sharon was either going to beat cancer, which she did, or she was going home to her eternal home. That is a win-win. There's no loss there. There's sadness, maybe. There were tough times in there. But that prayer time and getting to keep coming to it, even with my nothing, oh, the Lord is so good. 
one of the prayers that comes out of this book that I just want to share with you real quick. Um, so over time, the school that I happen to teach at, it has not been great. I've been there, there now 18 years. So my prior job where I was at in another school, they laid off a lot of us teachers. And so I was laid off and I ended up at this other school. And within two years of being at this other school, I knew immediately that things are not good at this school. And so like I had talked about how prayer and at a public school, there were times that I wanted to run out of that public school. I went through some pretty tough times in this school. And it would get to the point that I have a prayer, and it was from Men of Praise. At Men of Praise, we have a brother long ago that taught me about pray without ceasing, but continually praying for the same thing over and over again. And every Monday night, this gentleman, Bob, would pray for the exact same prayer. He would say the same prayer. Every time we got to intercessory prayer, he would say the same prayer over and over again. And within my first year, I would hear Bob just say the same prayer over and over again. I was like, and, and that's scripture. We're supposed to be consistent in prayer. And this is one of the things that the book taught me. So I was like, okay, I can jump on board with that. And so every Monday night at Men of Praise and every Thursday night at Families in Christ Jesus, I will lift my school district up. And I will lift my school district up to the Lord. And I do it in all my prayer times. But it would get to the point that I would do it so much that if I had to miss a meeting for some reason, someone else in the group will always lift my school district up. And one of the things that this book came out is it said this. Let me show you a good way to ask for happiness, even in this world. It is a way that will oblige God to listen to you. Say to him earnestly, either give me so much money that my heart will be satisfied or inspire me with such content for it that I no longer want it. Either free me from poverty or make it so pleasant for me that I would not exchange it for all the wealth in the world. Either take away my suffering or, which would be to your greater glory, change it into delight for me. And instead of causing me affliction, let it become a source of joy. You can take away my burden of my cross, or you can leave it with me without my feeling its weight. You can extinguish the fire that burns me, or you can let it burn in such a way that refreshes me as it did the three youths in the fiery furnace. I ask you for either one thing or the other. What does it matter? In what way am I happy? If I am happy through the possession of worldly goods, it is you I have to thank. If I am happy when deprived of them, it gives you greater glory, and my thanks are all the greater. And so one of those things that I, I would learn in that is that at my work, at my cross that I had at my public school that I could pray for, that I was able to lift it up over and over again and the Lord worked on my heart. And I'm to the point now where I will say that this prayer, and I have seen a lot of awesome answered prayers at my school, but I am thankful for this book and for the opportunity to pray because what I recognize is as I've gone deeper into my relationship with the Lord from my prayer time, it wasn't anything about my work that truly needed to change anyways. It was my heart. And my attitude and my just love of serving the Lord in my work in in the muck when it's mucky but when the awesome things happen and I see those things like I did last week at my parent teacher conferences I can praise the Lord all the more amen and so one of the things the book pointed out and that I had already known was another saint Saint Monica right? How many of us know about St. Monica? We all need a St. Monica in, my, in your life, right? My mother was my St. Monica, but St. Monica, if you know anything about her, she prayed for 16 years for her son's conversion. 16 years, that's a long time. And she prayed 16 years for her son's conversion, and not only did the Lord answer it, she wasn't praying for everything that 
Saint Augustine became. She was just praying for his conversion. And the Lord's like, watch what I do. Right? In my work now, I've been there 18 years. 16 years at least of praying this every week, several times for my work. That's a long time. I had a lot of ups and downs and some rough points in my work. But thanks be to God, I can tell you right now that the answer prayers are coming. One of my former students is now back teaching with me. And we have an awesome prayer time. And let me tell you how awesome my work is right now. My boss, my principal, a principal of a public high school, will bring me in for a special meeting in her office just so we can pray for the things going on in our school. And we will go meet in the school board office and pray. And she brought me in and she said, we got this meeting coming up. It's gonna be a tough meeting. She goes, I wanted to bring you in today because the meeting's tomorrow. I need you to fast with me. My principal is asking me to fast with her. <laughs> Good things are happening at my school. It's an awesome time. And this is, this is the boss who, when we've gone in to pray, she's a blessed prayer from her prayer time and what she's watched the Lord do. She's gone in, we went in during the summer to pray throughout our building because we got a new school building. And we prayed throughout it. And she's like, I got the offices. Awesome, I'll take the middle school. She went in those offices and I heard this screaming going on where she was casting the devil out. And I am pretty positive I watched the devil run out of our school with the tail between its legs. She was that powerful. And all I kept doing was going, Lord, you are so good. In prayer time, pray without ceasing. It's doable. I'm a witness. I see it. And as you do it, that relationship with Jesus, my prayer time at Mass, it's the most beautiful thing I have. I'm honored to be here with you tonight. Thank you for listening. Amen.